Hello, it's me again, back with another review of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Well, the web hands will appear in the thumbnail, maybe, I don't know. Uh, or I said Into the Spider-Verse, Across the Spider-Verse. That's the sequel, that's the movie that just came out. I saw it at the beginning of this month, but uh, I've been busy. I really actually have been quite busy. Um... So by the time I'm putting this out, it's like, whatever, you've probably already seen the movie. But if you haven't, if you somehow haven't seen, so Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the new Spider-Man movie, uh, the new animated Spider-Man movie, the sequel to 2019's Into the Spider-Verse, 2018, I think it was 2019, uh, maybe it was, I don't remember, I don't remember what year it was, doesn't matter, uh, into the Spider Verse, I do have a review of that up as well. I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't rewatch the review to really know what I thought of it, but I know that it, I thought it was great. Uh, definitely worthy of its best animated feature uh, Oscar win that year. And this movie's probably gonna win this year too. In fact, I'd be like shocked. I'd be shocked and disappointed if it doesn't. I know there's a whole rest of a year left, but I really. From an animation perspective, I can tell you right now, nothing this year is going to top this movie because holy crap, if you, if you have a love for the medium of animation, I, I, I also said this about Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, but it, it rings even more true. It rings far more true with this movie. Like if you have a love of animation, you need to see this movie. And honestly, you've probably already heard that, and you've probably already seen it. Uh, but it's just, it's so, the like, Into the Spider-Verse was very groundbreaking, and its style played a large part in the, like, puss, like, the, that style sort of led into the style of Puss in Boots, which I reviewed last year. But then this movie has taken that style to the next step further. The... I, I'm going to try not to spoil anything, but there's like, there are characters in this movie that come from different universes, no shit, and they're animated differently. Like, they're, they're, they're stuck, like the style of the vulture, this is a character that appears early in the movie, so I'll, but like, his, his like medieval style is so distinct, it's like the first fight scene, so that's all I'm going to say about that. But just from the first fight scene, I was like, oh, I'm in. I'm in. I'm so in. I was so in all the way through, in fact, and I never stopped being in. Uh, but it's not all just, like, fluid fight animation. There's a lot, of, like, even the, like, softer, quieter moments are beautiful. Like, there's the, so this movie has a, uh, Gwen Stacy has a much bigger role in this movie. Uh, she kind of has... She's the character who kind of goes through the more complete arc in this movie, actually. Miles' arc isn't really done yet. And I, I can go into why that is with spoilers, but, like, basically, Gwen is the one who has a complete arc in this movie, and I really, I did not expect that. I did not expect so, like, a, a story from her, because she was cool in the first movie, but honestly, not, like, she wasn't what I was watching. She wasn't the most memorable character in that first movie. She was a little... Not one-dimensional, maybe, like, two-dimensional. But now, she's got a whole arc in here, and th there's a scene with her and her dad where the colors in the background are, like, literally melting, like, and, like, mood. It, it, they go so abstract with a lot of the, like, coloring in this, and it's just, it's so, like, artistic. The artistic medium of animation is used to its possibly unprecedented fullness in this movie like i've i've heard people say this is the best looking american animated movie ever and there's an argument to be made for that it it is gorgeous and it is so creative and it's not just gorgeous but it's like gorgeous and creative in a way that serves everything serves the world serves the universes serves the characters serves the story uh and really lets you like sit and 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 be taken in awe by even like these simple moments, these simple scenes, like Gwen talking to her dad about about Spider Man stuff. Uh, to be vague, um, the 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 
And then the action, of course, is incredible. Just as incredible as it was in the first one, but, like, even more so. Like, ramped up to the nth degree now. Uh, and all the different Spider-Man are really, really cool to see. Both in a, like, like oh, look, it's Spider-Man! And also just in a, like, narrative sense is very satisfying. And the whole multiverse thing, I mean, it was it's building upon what the last movie did amazingly. I've always... I. There's a lot of poo-hoo on multiverse now because Marvel is, like, overusing the concept, uh, sometimes better than other times, and, but I don't, I inherently like the, the concept of the multiverse. It just needs to be done well. Everything, everywhere, all at once did it amazingly. I feel like this movie is this year's Everything Everywhere All at Once in terms of how well it handles the multiverse. It's not quite as good as Everything Everywhere All at Once, but that movie, that movie sets up an even more absurdly, Everything Everywhere All at Once is like the best movie of this decade so far. Uh, Spider-Verse does not top that, but it does, in my opinion, beat out Into the Spider-Verse. And I think the reason for me is that Into the Spider-Verse uses the multiverse stuff as flavor, but it is ultimately a pretty simple Spider-Man origin story that we've kind of seen before. We've never seen it exactly done like this, obviously, but we have seen it before. So uh, it's a, a great version of that story, probably the best version of that story in film. Uh, it's not my favorite... Like, this, this movie takes full advantage of the concept of the multiverse uh, in every layer of its storytelling. We're not just in Miles' world. We're going across the Spider-Verse. We're in, there's a an India, the, like an India world with like, I'm not going to try to say the name of that version of Peter Parker, uh, but the t city's like Mumbatan, which I might not even be saying that right. Uh, there's Gwen Stacy's world, which is like, Slower scenes usually, but does have a distinct style. Also, every world has such a distinct style, and sometimes the the characters from that world, like Spider Punk, is animated so interestingly. We never see his world, but it's like he's another one that's got a different style. You see, I'm going through the movie a little bit, revealing more characters that are in it. Uh, Miguel O'Hara, uh, Spider Man 2099, like his futuristic world is beautiful as well, um, and there's all these other little, like, cameo spoilers, if you care about that. There's, we see glimpses of Toby and Andrew Spider-Man, we see, we are, we hear references to MCU Spider-Man, like, truly every Spider-Man is within this narrative, is within this unit, multiverse, and they're all connected through, you might have seen and talk on about like canon events. What a great way to like t sort of meta narratively tie all the Spider Men together is that like the bad things that happen to them are like canon events, things that have to happen in their story, and then you have your m protagonist challenge that. I I'm gonna like slowly roll more and more into spoilers. So if you're starting to like not like it, just Click off and, and go watch the movie. If you somehow haven't already, go see it. Uh, it's it's better than Into the Spider-Verse. And really, the only sticking point that you might, may, might make you not like it as much as it, it is less... It is... It has second entry in a trilogy style where it's clearly setting up for the next movie and doesn't really work self-contained in a vacuum whereas Into the Spider-Verse does. That sort of thing bothers you. They didn't really... It's kind of... It's like... They did the same thing with Dune in 2020, where they didn't really market it as a part one of a story, but it is very much a, like, part of a story. And that's why I was mentioning Gwen's arc, because hers is the one that has a beginning and an end in this movie, and I, they were smart to throw that in there, because it's it's done really well. Um, now I'm, I'm going to actually get into spoilers. So, like... Go watch the movie. It's incredible. It's uh, like it's worth seeing in theaters just for the visuals alone. Uh, but yeah, it's spoilers. Uh, the spot as a villain, 
you know, you wouldn't think in the marketing they show him like twice, and you're like, oh, he's the fun, the the catalyst villain that gets things moving. He's the that's kind of the whole point. The whole point of his narrative is that he's like a villain of the week, a catalyst villain that doesn't really matter. But what he does, the way he multiverse jumps, has such a big impact. And this, I, he's really well done. We don't see as much of him in this movie, but what we do get is, what we do get is really good, uh, and unexpected. I didn't expect him to be such a like threatening force, and like actually develop. Like he's introduced as kind of a joke, but he like develops and grows and learns with his toolkit alongside the heroes, which is really interesting. Um, Peter B. Parker is not in it as much, but what he does have a great moment with Miles. The whole chase sequence in the of like the other Spider-Man chasing Miles has so many like great moments. Like the movie could have ended as somebody who knew it was going to be like kind of a part one. The movie knew I I what am I saying? I was sitting there watching that sequence thinking the movie could end after this. The movie could end with him going back to his home universe. And that and it and I'd already like it better than into the Spider-Verse. I it would already be a 10 out of 10. We were already comfortably in 10 out of 10 best movie I've seen this year territory. And then, end of spoilers, end of the movie spoilers, uh, in case you still haven't clicked off, if you care about that. Um, the twist was so good. The, he's in the wrong universe and like the slow realization it's, it, oh my god. Like, when he tells his mom he's Spider-Man, and she's like, who's Spider-Man? I thought it was, like, kind of, it, I thought it was a standard, like, haha, like, standard mediocre Marvel movie quip, where, where it's like, oh, haha, she doesn't even know who Spider-Man is. Like, that's funny. And I, and I kind of laughed, and it was funny, but in the back of my head, I was like, I kind of expect better from this movie than, like, Who's Spider-Man? Ha ha ha. Jokes. Uh, but the fact that it, it wasn't. Like, uh, she doesn't know who Spider-Man is because that universe doesn't have a Spider-Man. Because that was the universe where Miles was supposed to get bit. He got sent to the universe where his spider was from. I'm explaining this to all one viewer who's still here who's seen the movie and wants to hear my full thoughts on it. But it was just, I'm explaining it because it was just so good. I just, and realizing that, and then, like, from there, you don't know anything. You do it's like, Aaron Davis, the Prowler from the first movie, comes into the house, and you're, and I was like, so is he, is this a universe where he married your mom? Is this a universe where he's a good guy? Like, what's going on? Why is he here? Just, like, the sheer... Fear realization. That whole last sequence. And Miles from that universe being the Prowler. Oh my god. I I don't know if I've ever been more excited for a movie than I am for uh, Beyond the Spider-Verse. Coming out next year, hopefully. Apparently they haven't even started recording lines yet. So it's iffy. But I hope it comes out next year. One of those movies where like... I've only been going for like 13 minutes. One of those movies that I probably could, I could find an hour's worth of things to talk about, but it really is just worth like seeing and experiencing and absorbing for yourself. Literally like absorbing all of the colors that come from the vibrant screen and hopefully being in a theater that plays it correctly. Apparently some theaters have been, had like mix, sound mixing issues. I don't know. I didn't experience that. I went on opening night and with all my friends, just like we did with No Way Home. This was... I mean, No Way Home is probably my favorite live-action Spider-Man movie. Because I, I like... Me likey some multiverses. Multiverses? The game? Okay, what am I doing? Like, this this video's over already. I did, I'm telling you to go see Across the Spider-Verse if you haven't already. Just... the oh, There's literally only one... The literal only complaint is that... Oh, the movie ends on a cliffhanger. And I could have sat there and watched the next two and a half hour movie right then. Uh, it's that good. It's not, it's, 
it's a 10 out of 10. Five out of five. Easy, easiest my entire friend group gets out of their seats and rates it five out of five on Letterboxd. Easiest five out of five, 10 out of 10 ever. 11 out of 10. Perfect. Perfection. It's gonna win Best Animated Feature at the Oscars. It's not even a question. I know DreamWorks is making a Charlie is making a movie written by Charlie Kaufman, but Spider-Verse. Spider-Man. Spider-Man! Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse! Let's go! It was such a let's go movie, but not in like a cheesy way. In a like, I'm genuinely hyped because this movie is sick and I want to see more of this like ever-expanding multiversal epic of a story. If Beyond the Spider-Verse is this good, we may be shaping up for like the best trilogy of all time. Uh, just straight up. And that's, that's awesome. It's a great time to be a Spider-Man fan. I'm not even that much of a Spider-Man fan. It's a great time to be a movie fan. Uh, Arrivederci!